Okay, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the new version of GPT for All, also known as GPT for All J, based on the fact that it's trained on the GPT J model. It's a fine tuning of that model. So, this is an interesting idea here, similar to the previous video with Dolly. It seems that they're trying to make a model that can be used commercially and can be licensed in a way that people can use it easily, which obviously Llama couldn't do. And that's why a lot of people are moving away from some of those. They do have the original one that's Llama. The new one is the GPT J one. So there's a bunch of interesting things in here. So the thing I'd say that's great about this project is that they've got a whole bunch of different documentation of what's going on. The other thing I would say that's really fantastic about this project is that it's made, it's almost like they're aiming to make this thing to be loaded locally on a computer rather than uh, in the cloud or running with a lot of GPUs, etc. I love the fact that the new version now has installers for Windows, Linux, and Mac that you can just run the installer. It will set it up and give you something that you can then basically run this app on your machine, which is pretty amazing there. So again, they released a paper with the first one, they released a paper as well. It's great to see these groups releasing a paper of what they've actually done. Here, we can see a little bit about this. So, okay, the key thing here, and the thing that's really gotten a lot better is this is now Apache 2 licensed. They promote it as being a chatbot. So the whole thing is made for that. They talk about how the original one that was a Llama model, but unfortunately that was GPL licensed. All right. And in this one, they've gone much more for some of the data sets that are open to be used for something commercial. Additionally, one of the key things that they've gone for here is the ability to basically quantize it down to four bits and then allow people to run that on their own machine, um, which I think is a great direction. And it does make it really interesting that people are going in different directions with these things. I, so let's look at the data sets. So the data sets is where they expanded this a lot. So they've gone for a much smaller model. They've gone for the GPT J model, which is smaller than what they were doing before, but they've tried to make up for it by going for a lot bigger data set. And so they point out that the data set is th I think is about double the size as, of what it was before. So they use a lot of the lion data sets which expands on what they were using before. They also use Stack Overflow questions and the P3 data set. So that hasn't changed, but we can see that the, here they point out, this is 800, they've released this data set, 800K point GPT-4 data set. That is a superset of the original 400K points. Right. As always, they've, they've plotted it to show in their software. Remember, we looked at this last time that they've got software for comparing these. They've got a nice, sort of description of what they did to basically make the data set, how they du duplicated it, how they chose different sorts of things, how they got rid of any prompts that had less than 10 characters. They also added in a bunch of things for creative writing. So to write a creative story type about now in the style of it is an interesting thing they've put in there. So the paper's got some nice things about how they do training. So it looks like they've done one lot of training for one epoch, and then they've done another lot of training where they've done a LoRa training, which is for four epochs using the GPT-J model. The biggest thing I would say this project suffers from and this model suffers from is that they're using the GPT-J model, which is a much older model now. It would be interesting to see a GPT for all with the 12 billion Pythia model. That would certainly be something that's worth looking at, and perhaps even the 7 billion Pythia model in there. So we can see that this is the one that we're looking at. It does, it does pretty well in other things in a lot of, we can see this is the one we're looking at. It does pretty well in a lot of the benchmarks, although it's beaten quite consistently by Hacker for most of them. Again, that 1 trillion tokens of the Llama model just allows it to pull ahead with a lot of these benchmarks. As in their previous paper for version one, they talk about the costs. Here, they talk about the cost of running their experiment for the GPUs as roughly $5,000. They talk about that they used a DGX 8100 machines. 
but that only cost them two two hundred dollars. So I'm not sure what the all the cost went for, but it's certainly interesting. And then they also talk about actually doing some of the evaluations stuff in there. So overall, I think it's a it's definitely an interesting one to look at. The big thing I would say that is the issue here is all about do you want to run something locally or not? So w- when we run this in Colab, I've got a Colab set up for this. When we run it in Colab, it's pretty simple to bring it in. You can see here I'm running a full-size version, but we're loading it in 8-bit. And we can see that the generation is a bit hit and miss. Some things come out really nice. Other things come out quite short, or they have this as an AI model. I do not have personal beliefs or opinions. And you see that a lot in this. So I know from the comments that people have written, a lot of people don't like that and are trying to get away from that, especially if they're going to have a model running on their own machine. I think that's basically just due to the data sets that they've got in here. You can see that for short prompts like this, it's doing quite well. It's certainly giving us the right answer for what is the capital of London. If we ask it to come up with a story, it comes up with quite an interesting story, perhaps not as good as some of the Llama models, but that's to be expected. And then when we ask it things like, okay, what do you like something? Do you not? We get this typical sort of, I'm sorry, but as a AI large language model, I cannot have personal opinions or preferences. However, to answer your question, it, it then gives us some, some information about that. It doesn't actually tell us, it seems to be answering the wrong question though. It's telling us about, do, does, do we like telling us about the Simpsons, but it's not answering, what do you know about Homer there? And then the last one I thought was actually pretty impressive. So I took their format for the prompt and put write a poem about large language models in the style of Shakespeare. And you can see that, so it's already changed my prompt to put all Milton in there. In the days when men could scarce read and write, a large language model stood tall and bright. Its words were like music to our ears as it spoke with ease for hours on end. These models grew so large that they took up space like giants looming over man's small race. It's pretty impressive for for what it is. Certainly a month ago, people would have thought, oh, this is fantastic. Perhaps not so much now when we've seen some of the other things that have come along. But anyway, this is it. You can certainly have a play with it. They've also got a notebook themselves, which you could check out. I think it's probably more for the first version of the GPT for all. Uh, But like I said, the key for this one is the fact that you can install it locally on your machine. Uh, And so if you don't have access to any cloud or collab or anything like that, you would be able to use this. Anyway, that's it for this model. As always, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please click like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.